Hi everyone, Andy here at MVP Java. Today we're going to be talking about interfaces. So in part one, we're going to be concentrating on the concept and also identifying the problem. So I'm going to show you some source code that is not being coded to an interface and we'll see what kind of problems we can have when we're not coding to an interface. So I wrote down the big three here, maintainability, flexibility, and separation of concerns, or a lack of all these three is what we're going to see in the problem. And then in the subsequent video, what I'll do is I'll show you the solution. I'll show you some source code. We'll get into the details and the syntax of everything. And we'll come back to these big th the big three points here and we'll see how we've solved these issues. Okay. So first off, let's take a look at the problem. So I wrote a class here called the electrical outlet, right? That takes in a outlet type ID into the constructor. So I've simplified this for the example and it's a very basic string. It's a letter code, really. So A or B is for um, countries like Canada or US, and they can go all the way to letter O in real life. Okay. And the workhorse method here is the get electricity method that returns an electricity object if everything goes well. And if for some reason we have some sort of power outage, then we throw an exception. All right. So I've included some very uh, rudimentary business logic here, just as sort of a scaffolding of it, where after I uh, extract the country code through a system property, I check if there's uh, an electrical meter, if it's running. And if it was running, I would start maybe some billing service or something like that to charge for the electricity being used. Uh, if not, I could throw some exception. And over here, I'm checking the country code is, you know, matches that um, electrical outlet type uh, that is necessary for that country. So, you know, this could be a very long switch statement here, which in and itself is not good design, but like I said, um, just for demonstration purposes, right? So over here, what's, what catches your eye is this, this flag here, if is water flowing. See, what you gotta understand, which is not obvious here, is that I am implementing in this code a hydroelectric power implementation, right? So, you know, electricity can be generated in different ways. So in this case, I said, well, it's going to be by hydropower. So, you know, water flowing over a dam kind of thing. So I've simulated uh, over here, there's this uh, instance variable, which if you scroll up, you'll notice it's a random uh, Java random class. And it basically just generates a random number from zero to a thousand and if we're unlucky enough to get you know this magic number 42 then that'll return that there's no water flowing and then we'll get that exception but right that's just one chance out of a thousand so all the other you know numbers that get generated from here will generate electricity and that's exactly what will happen here. I'll come all the way down and return electricity if that's the case, okay? So it's just, just a little fun model there just to, to, to simulate that, okay? Now, what is, what's the problem with this code, right? Well, if we take a look at those big three points, first one on the list was maintainability. So the problem with this code is that if the I implementation changes in the sense where if electricity is generated in another way, let's say nuclear power, then, you know, this code needs to be maintained, right? So there's, there's different options here. You say, well, I can just, you know, scrap this whole thing out and, you know, scrap this line out here with the random and the method at the bottom and put my new code. However, you lose your old implementation, right? So that's not good. So you might say, well, you know, I'm going to copy paste this whole method and give this this method a, a nice name like get uh, nuclear uh, electricity or something like that, right? Well, that's not very good as well since you're duplicating code, you're gonna have to maintain duplicated code, which we all know is not good, right? And as time goes on and extra implementations are needed because it'll always happen, change is inevitable, you're gonna be getting a lot of new methods continuously getting added, right? So it's not scaling well and the API will be more complex and the caller code, right, the client code calling this will have to kind of make logical decisions on which method to call in different situations. So that's even more code that you'd have to maintain every time uh, there's a new implementation. So that's, that's not good. Now, the other thing is, you could, well, I'm going to, you know, extend this class and override the get electricity method. But then again, right, 
you would still have to find a way to kind of share that business logic. So you'd have to really refactor this code. And then you kind of have a class explosion of, uh, you know, a lot of subclasses every time an extra implementation is needed. And we still haven't solved the problem where the caller code has to make a decision, kind of like playing the uh, if else if game, right? If it's this, then new this class. If this condition, then new this class. So that's not very maintainable as well. So what do we do, right? Well, we're going to get to that. But that was just, you know, point one. Point two, flexibility. Can we really swap out this implementation at runtime, right? Right now, it's, it's hard-coded. It's stuck on, you know, a hydroelectric electricity. So the answer to that is no. Um, it's not a very testable design either since I'm not injecting an implementation. The implementation is, is, is just in, in there. It's going to be hard to swap out another implementation for testing purposes too. For example, unit testing, right? And point three, which is the separation of concerns, we have our business logic, right? Let's, let's call this all, maybe not the first line here, but like this part over here. Then we have some application logic here it's mixed in with the implementation, right? So we don't have a clear separation of concerns. We have this client code interacting, not with an interface, but rather directly with an implementation, which then gives, you know, rise to the other two problems of flexibility and maintainability. So it's kind of like a vicious circle in a sense. So, right, what do we do? Well, in order to, you know, we don't just want to learn the syntax and just stick a, an interface in there we want to really understand what's going on so the best way to understand uh, the interface is by learning uh, an example that you can relate to in your, your personal everyday life right so one example that I can think of is the electrical outlet that's kind of like why I, I wrote up this uh, project here and the other parts will have uh, those projects extended to include other parts okay so it's the same project for all the parts and Every day you interact with that electrical interface in a sense that is your interface, right? So we plug in different devices into an electrical outlet and we expect electricity to come out of that outlet. That's because an interface is really a contract, right? A well-defined interface says you do, you know, whatever you have to do that I declared my interface, in this case, plug in your appliance. And I promise that I can generate electricity. That's the contract. I will generate electricity. So we all know what happens when electricity doesn't come out of the electrical socket, right? You're not very happy. And in this case, if you look at this method here, if that's you know the case in the code, you would get this exception. So we're not happy when our contract is not adhered to. And it's really going to be the same thing in our code base. When a contract is broken, the clients will suffer. So in this case, you know, we're suffering because we're not getting electricity. But what's going to happen, let's say, if the electrical implementation in your country changes, right? Do you have to change all your appliances or have to buy, you know, new adapters for all your appliances? Or do you have to, you know, get an electrician to come and change all your uh, electrical outlets because, you know, the government decided, well, instead of hydroelectric energy, we're going to go to nuclear energy or coal powered energy or whatever. It doesn't make sense. And you would not expect that. That's because, you know, that interface is well defined and we are abstracted away from those details. We're not involved as in implementation details. We shouldn't be. It doesn't make sense to. Right. So in our daily lives, we get this concept that we interact with an interface and because we're shielded or abstracted away from those changes that may occur in the background, it makes everything much more flexible to change. So we have, you know, that separation of concerns with the interface. The electrical company is free to change the infrastructure in the back uh, or the implementation, right? And we just keep on using that interface as is. It's very flexible because they're free to change their implementation in the back. And it's that nice separation of concerns, right? The client, us, we're just really um, concerned about using appliances and plugging in and, and working with those appliances through that interface because it's giving us something because it can do this. And, you know, in the background, they're free to change their implementation without really being concerned about anything on our side. So 
that's really the whole concept. That's the point of having an interface. So if that makes sense in our daily lives, right? Why is it that we, when we code or when we see code that other people have written, that we forget this concept? We see code like this, right? We see client code directly interfacing with an implementation, right? Don't you find that this looks weird that an electrical outlet has an electri uh, electricity simulator with a random class and water flowing stuff? It doesn't make sense, right? We should be abstracted away from that. So let's see um, how we're gonna fix this, okay? So in the next video, what we're gonna see is we're going to create an interface. I'm gonna show you how to do that. I'm gonna show you how to incorporate it in this code so that we can only interact with that interface. And then we're gonna get more into the syntactical details of everything. So that's it for part one, guys. Um, leave me your comments. Let me know what you think about um, this video that just goes through the concept and everything. And I'll see you guys in part two where we're gonna get our hands a little bit dirtier with uh, the details of it all. See you then.